Ridwan seems to be very interested in physics and mathematics also, just like this guy here, uh, Jacob, that you'll see a video about, who explains about time travel. Um, what Ridwan is going to do is re-explain or reinterpret what Jake is trying to do in his video, okay? Ridwan, or what try you to understand, or try to understand. Or actually he's saying he will try to understand what Jake is saying. Because I'm not 100% sure this is what he's saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know too much about this. That's right. Um, Jake, it's it's uh, estimated that Jake has an IQ a lot more than Einstein, and he's already uh, trying to figure out something that Einstein has done wrong about his own theory. So he's like a super genius guy, but you know, Ridwan also very interested in physics and math is uh, trying to understand how Jake's Jake's ideas work, right? Ridwan, yeah. why don't you start the video and do it? Hi, it's Jake, and I am doing a lecture on space time because a lot of you are interested on this Charlie Chaplin film that is currently out. Okay, so, last time I had a wormhole, and I briefly explained what it was, and now I'm probably going to go into it with a little more detail. Okay, so, this is, like, just a more detailed picture on how you could go through the space-time, like, you go into a black hole's event horizon. If you get lucky, you can come out. Next. Um, let's see. Now, a wormhole is composed is composed of space-time itself. See, like, here would be our space-time. At least two black holes. And if you wanted to, you could probably add in a couple more. But that's kind of complicated. Anyway, so then I got these black holes. And then there's also a thing called a white hole, which is all, which is also probably in there. Now, what I'm trying, what I think he's trying to say is, this is say this is a huge area and this is space time, okay? And what he, what I think he's trying to say is, this is a white hole, this is a black hole, this is another black hole, and this is a great distance, say like million kilometers or something like that. So. What I think is, since a white hole gives out energy and a black hole sucks in energy, the white hole is giving out energy and making an energy field like this, on both sides, like this. So, what I think he's trying to say is, if someone is like this, someone here, I know for a bit So, if someone is right here, and he comes out here, and gets shot very far, Say he's somewhere around here, and this is very far, and the black hole can suck him again. Then he can go out from a huge distance in a short amount of time. But if he goes from here to here, very close to it, then he can go back here. And if he doesn't, and if this repeats and repeats and repeats, it will never. Well. He'll never actually reach to anywhere. He'll just be in two places. So it seems like it, it depends on how, the size of the black hole that's going to, and the and the white hole that will make. Yeah, and the white hole's energy as how long the white hole's been there. Like if the white hole's been there for so long, he's about to like go out. Then you just get sucked in a white black hole and never come out. Hmm. Okay, so he could actually get stuck in somewhere yeah, in a space could, time. Yeah, he could actually get stuck in space time, somewhere random. But if someone's going through a white hole, um, a wormhole, and then suddenly all of it stops, that means the white hole stops, the black hole stops, and this black hole, maybe it doesn't stop because it's far away. Mm -hmm. But if it stops, then all of them stop, and the wormhole doesn't go anywhere. Then you have to travel a great distance back if you want to go from where you were. Again. Right. Okay. And that's a catastrophe. That's just a unlucky chance. Mm -hmm. Okay. As he said, this is the chance. He goes here. Right. He goes out. X is like the exact opposite of a black hole. Black hole sucks everything in. White hole pushes everything out. And it's that white hole that allows you to go through. Otherwise, you'd hit the singularity, boom, you're dead. Um. Let's so, see. So the singularity is the catastrophe. Next, for our yeah. wormhole, we will have. Right. There are also like multiple dimensions that the space time can bend in, like like it's here and then it can be there. Here, I'm just gonna draw a graph.
does that look like anything, or do I need to change that? Hang on a sec. So those are the space-time bending. Yes. Through the different dimensions. No, that does look like. I think that looks like something, but okay. So next, like I could have a blue hole. I mean, like a black hole right there. Make an intersection there. And then it could just intersect in a different dimension with something else. So, like... What I think he's trying to say is... That... These are the space-time curvatures of different dimensions. Yeah, so the... Like, this is one of the dimensions, space-time curvatures. This is another one. This is another one. Those are this bending of the space-time. Yeah, time. yeah, those are the bending. And the bending goes through one dimension to the other dimension. Yes. So the arches are these... Uh, 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 the dimensions, the arches. Yes. So, he's trying to say a black hole could be here. This is a black hole. A white hole here. Can you move a little bit? There's not enough light here. Okay. And then the same could happen through here. And there's another black hole here. So you can come connect from one space-time curvature to another space-time curvature. This could happen to any one of those. But also one dimension to another dimension. Yes, one dimension to another dimension, basically. But it it, it could also happen that the white hole is here, hmm. and then it curves back to go to here somehow. Like a black hole is somewhere here in between. Sucking the... Yeah, but it it's so like close to this part, it actually comes back here as, as normal. So... Hmm. It goes from one place and goes to the another place. Right, so you could actually... In the same dimension. So you could go to the same dimension. Or different dimensions. Yeah, and there could be different routes to that. Like one route here, one route here, one route here. I'll explain that later, okay. if he says that. Okay. These things carry on to different dimensions, practically. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that. Okay, so... Okay, so if you've read A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking, somewhere in there, is it in the seventh chapter? It's somewhere in the book that um, he says that space has no curvature, barely any curvature. It's like, quote, oh, one. However, that's because we're in it. Let's say we're not in it. Like, let's say we're that guy right there. Then it all of a sudden looks different. Like, let's say... You're on this plane that looks like... Oh. What I think he's trying to say is that basically space has no curvature since we are on it. But if we are out of it, that's why when we like see the Earth from everywhere, it looks flat to us. But if we're not on it and far in space, this satellite, we're in this satellite, Okay, we're in this satellite, okay, and now this satellite is seeing Earth, this huge place, Earth. Now, it's seeing it circular, like a sphere, instead of straight, because we're not on it. Yeah, I, I don't think this needs much more explanation than yeah. this, right? Yeah. yeah. Curved U or something. And then we go above the U. And suddenly the U would look different than if we were on the U. If we were on the U, everything would look mostly flat. But if we were above the U, it would look sort of curved. It depends on how So that's what I have right there. And yes. let's say I went this way, away from the curve, and, it, and then you'd see the whole U. So this is one reason why we may see space-time as if it's flat. But it's not, and then this would allow you to go through and make a wormhole, and then turn to Charlie Chaplin in 1928. Alright, so that's a little bit of space-time stuff. Let's see what else is there. Um, when a body's in space-time, it always makes a little dimple in it, like you're on a trampoline. So like, it's like, you're on like a trampoline, you put in a bowling ball, it's going to make like a little dimple in there. And then like, so, and then through these dimples, Einstein describes this as gravity. And so like, 
let's say here's where the sun is. And since it's more massive, it has more of a dimple. And then let's say here's where Earth is. And it gets dimple. Which is smaller. And then here's the moon. Which has a really small one, so I'm just barely going to draw it. You know, because of this, what I think he's going to say, what I think he's saying is that this is like a trampoline, but this trampoline, it, when you like put a bowling ball, it like goes down. The same way this is the sun on this trampoline, which is space time. And this like ball, the sun is like a bowling ball and it curves this space time, just like making this trampoline look like this. And the Earth is here with a smaller one, right, like that, and the moon just like there. So what I try what he's probably saying well one thing is for sure, and that is why when the Earth is curving just like this, this is just like the orbit of the Earth. That's why the or that's why Earth doesn't orbit straight like an oval. The Earth orbits this way, like here, like an oval. Yeah, you just said the same thing in the opposite way. First said doesn't circle like an oval, then you said it circles like an oval. No, what I'm trying to say is it circles like an oval in any way but this way it's circling straight just like doing this yeah but this way it's circling like this instead of straight like this you can put a straight line in there you can put a line just like this in there hmm. uh, that's a bit confusing what you're saying no 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 well okay this is the last time i'm explaining it and i'm explaining it simpler this is the exact same oval as this, but the Earth in this one is actually orbiting it straight way, like this, this, this. But this also has a straight way. Here, 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 here. Yes, this is straight if you look at it from a different angle. Okay. But the Earth actually spins around the uh, circles of the Sun in. Um, in an oval shape like this. Yes, it circles the sun in an oval shape, but it oh, it circles the sun in an oval shape in a direction just like this instead of a straight direction where we can put a straight line here. We can put. Why a do you think that's? Line. Why did? Because of the space-time curvature right here. Okay, right well, here. But shouldn't the space-time curvature make all the space around the sun like a trampoline dimple? And the sun, the earth should just follow the dimple. Yeah, it should follow the dimple. But if it's isn't like a normal trampoline, it should just go straight to the sun. That's why we're not counting this as an actual trampoline. Oh. And so it circles this like this direction. Like if it circled it straight, it would actually go past the sun quickly. Hmm. It had to go quickly past the sun, or else it would be like the hottest season of summer in the world. <laughs> no, that's not the reason. Okay. In some parts of the world, it is the hottest thing. Okay, but it just goes or it orbits in an oval shape, and it orbits in this direction, like this. Okay. So you're saying that it has a slingshot-like effect when it's near the yeah. sun. Yeah. Yeah, and no, it has a boomerang-like effect, but it keeps going and going, never stops. Just like we explained here, it goes from here to here to here. If you don't, if you don't jet far away. It goes from here to here to here, endless time, just like a boomerang. Okay, let's with, see. With endless power or something. All right, does all right? I believe that looks yeah that looks like something that's going up like that, and then so because of this, the Earth goes in a circle around the sun based off how this curve is. And that's one of the major points of what Einstein had
um, published in his Theory of General Relativity in 1915. Let's see. Also, at a really small level, this is mentioned a little bit in string theory. Um, space time is like constantly being like bumped up and down by different particles, like like all the different particles are making these little itty bit. What I think he's trying to say in this string theory is just like this trampoline thing. I'm drawing another trampoline-like thing. There's this object right here, a huge object. But this string theory is working just like a trampoline this time because this doesn't eject up again, the sun. The sun's mm -hmm. space-time curvature doesn't go up again. But this one works like a trampoline. It goes up, 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 up. Up, down, and up, down? Yes, up, down, like this. Do you even know what string theory is? Nope. <laughs> I'm trying to understand, though. <laughs> Okay, we got to learn about string theory a little bit, but let's see what if if what he says is what what you're trying to also. Um, yeah, and he comes to a point, a point to where we don't know how far it is. It could be farther than this this uh, wormhole. Make space time go. Sort of like um. It's sort of like uh, what's it like um. It's like a, um. I'm just gonna come up with this, like maybe a kid bouncing on a tra on a trampoline, like the trampoline goes up and down and up and down and up and down as he's bouncing, and then I'm guessing that's an analogy that would be like. But then eventually you can't really see this because these particles are really itty bitty, and so like here you're not seeing bumping up and down and up and down and up and down, simply because he's saying that. This thing isn't actually huge like the sun is. It's like pretty small. You can't. It's smaller than this dot. You can't see it. So you can't see it go up and down. It's like dropping that from such a height. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and, down and then it continues up to a point which we still don't know what it is. Hmm. Really? And you don't know string theory? Nope. <laughs> Where are you coming up this? Coming up with this from? He's saying it's a small particle. Yeah, because string theories are actually applied to small particles. Yes. Okay. And you, now they're trying to apply the string theory into general relativity where space-time curvature happens in with large yeah. objects. Yes. Okay. Larger objects like the sun. Like, there are a bunch of these small objects in the sun. So many. Hmm. That's why the sun can just stay here instead of going on a trampoline, going up and down, up and down, and up and down. Oh, okay. I didn't get that from his lecture. Though. Okay, let's see. The particles are small. It's really small. Okay. So that is practically how space time acts at quantum level, I believe. Um, and that's happen that happens in the quantum see. level, which is very. Yeah, that's why. That's why it's very small. That's why I said this object is very small, and there's a bunch of these in here. So at the quantum level, there's also some space-time curvature yeah. that's going on. Yeah, space-time curvature. It's so small, it goes like this, and it just like bounces. And we actually... can't even see it. One might be like bouncing right here, right now, but we can't see it. <laughs> but you know, there's an interesting uh, lecture by one of these uh, uh, scientists. Yes. And her only interest is to see the space-time mm -hmm. at quantum distances. So well, the quantum distance is yeah, like so between, pretty small. Pretty small it's actually ten, 10 to the power minus 35 okay, meters. Okay. That's called the Planck's distance. Okay, so this much distance is like an average problem for her. Yeah, sort of. And this much distance is like a normal problem for her. Mm -hmm. So like, you can put it to the smallest point, like even that. That much distance. She can even calculate that much distance? It's smaller than that. It's 10 to the power oh. minus 35 meters. How much is that? Mm. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll do that later. Okay. So, I think that's everything I know about space time. Uh, thanks for watching. Do you have any opinions you want to state while we're opinions? doing this lecture? Um, like what? Just any, any of your own opinions. Yeah. Uh -huh. Think that space time is not flat, as I've said before. I prefer it to be curved. Alright, um, thanks for watching.
do you have any opinion of your own about this? Like, whatever. Opinion of, like, what? Jake. Like, should it be curved or should it be flat? No, no, no. Like, whatever Jake said and his own uh, interpretation of space time, do you have any of your own opinion about space time or, you know, why did he even mention the string theory at the end? And, uh, no, no, I don't have anything to say about the string theory. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I don't know it too much. I'm just thinking he just meant what I explained earlier. Right. But what I think is actually he's trying to say is. No, I just want your own opinion about space own time. Own opinion, like. Space time and wormholes and everything. Space time, this is space time. What I think is if you're out of space time, out of reach from space time, you can see that in a different way than you can see it. Like, this might be space time when you're on it. I mean, this is space time when you're on it. And when you're not on it, this is space time. When you're not on it, you're out of reach of space time. Yeah, but that's what Jake said. I mean, space time is curved and not flat. That's yes, his own yes. But, what? but it's only flat if you're not on it. If you're out of reach from space time. So in reality, it is. Yes, it's, a, it's a, in reality it's never going, unless